Hi there. John Wilkinson, History Made Easier. I'm going to make three videos on the rise to power of Stalin. I'm not going to explore the round by round battle that he had with his rivals, Trotsky, Kamenev and Zinoviev, and finally Bukharin. Instead, in each of the videos, I'm going to focus on a different aspect in that rise to power. And in this first video, I'm going to focus on Lenin's legacy. Not the fact that he didn't identify a clear successor to lead the party, but rather the, the fact that he had revised Marxism to such an extent and in such important ways that it gave rise to the, to the new phenomenon of Marxism-Leninism. I'm going to use the work of a super historian, Robert Service, and his book, uh, The Penguin History of Modern Russia. And I'm going to read an extract that I think really sets the scene, um, the context of the, the battle for power and shows the, the importance of the legacy and the importance that that legacy was not clear. It shows, I think, uh, the confusion too. This is what Robert Service writes. The NEP had increased popular affection for Lenin and the members of the Politburo were hoping to benefit from his reputation by identifying themselves closely with him and his policies. Arrangements were made for factory hooters to be sounded and for all traffic to be halted at the time of his funeral. Despite the bitter cold, a great crowd turned out for the speeches delivered by Lenin's colleagues on Red Square, not by Trotsky though. The display of reverence for him became mandatory and any past disagreements with him were discreetly overlooked, at least in public. As his body was being laid out under glass, a competition took place as to who should be recognized as the authentic heir to his political legacy. Oaths were sworn in his memory and picture books of, it, of his exploits appeared in large print runs. This is the beginning of the cult of Lenin. An institute of the brain was founded where 30,000 slices were made of his cerebral tissue by researchers seeking the origins of his genius. His main works were published under Kamenev's editorship while rarer pieces of Leninania were prepared for a series of volumes entitled The Lenin Collection. Petrograd was renamed Leningrad in his honour. On a more practical level, Stalin insisted that homage to Lenin should be rendered by means of a mass enrolment of workers into the ranks of the Russian Communist Party. But what was Leninism? Lenin had eschewed giving a definition, affirming that Marxism required perpetual adjustment to changing circumstances. But his successors needed to explain what essential ideology they propounded under his name. The principal rivals, Trotsky, Zinoviev, Bukharin, Kamenev, and Stalin produced speeches, articles, and booklets for this purpose in 1924. A new term emerged, Marxism-Leninism. The contenders for the succession announced their commitment to every idea associated with Lenin. The dictatorship of the proletariat, violence as the midwife of revolutionary transformation, hierarchy, discipline and centralism. Concessions to peasants and oppressed nationalities. 
the incontrovertibility of Marxism and the inevitability of world revolution. Each Bolshevik leader believed in the one-party state, the one-ideology state, in legalised arbitrary rule and in terror as acceptable methods of governance, in administrative ultra-centralism, in philosophical amoralism. Neither Lenin nor any of the others used this terminology, but their words and deeds demonstrated their commitment. The speculation that if only Lenin had survived, a humanitarian order would have been established is hard to square with this gamut of agreed principles of Bolshevism. The differences with Lenin touched only on secondary matters. Trotsky wished to expand state planning, accelerate industrialization, and instigate revolution in Europe. Zinoviev objected to the indulgence shown to richer peasants. Kamenev agreed with Zinoviev and continued to try to moderate the regime's authoritarian excesses. Bukharin aspired to the creation of a distinctly proletarian culture, whereas Lenin wanted cultural policy to be focused on traditional goals, such as literacy and numeracy. Intellectual and personal factors were entangled because several Politburo members were engaged in a struggle to show who was the fittest to lead Lenin's mantle. So there you have, I think, the, uh, the importance of the Lenin legacy. You had to be seen to be loyal to Lenin. You had to be seen to be taking Leninism or Marxism, Leninism forward if you were to take the leadership. But that legacy was confused. And I would disagree with Robert Service in, in one sense. I don't think the, the um, disagreements with Lenin were secondary. I think things like what to do with the NEP, um, the, the, the issue of the, the authoritarian or centralised party, the, the notion of, of, of permanent revolution. These were important differences that, that, the, that the different rivals had both with Lenin and with each other. Um, and so uh, I, think, I think we have set the scene with Lenin's legacy. And in the next video, we'll go on to, to look at the, the, um, the, the arena uh, as, as Alan Bullock, who I'm going to use, uh, calls it. We're going to look at the arena in which uh, this battle for the succession takes place. So I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you find uh, the next two uh, interesting as well. But for now, cheers.